Well, it turns out Donald Trump and his 2016 rival Hillary Clinton do agree on something after all, and it is setting off a MAGA meltdown tonight. What I want to do and what I will do is you graduate from a college, I think you should get automatically as part of your diploma a green card to be able to stay in this country. And that includes junior oh. colleges, too. That actually echoed a Hillary Clinton campaign promise. The Trump campaign quickly tried to clarify his position, saying that there would be an aggressive vetting process to exclude all communist, radical Islamists, Hamas supporters, America haters, and public charges. But that's not quieting the criticism from the far right, including from fierce Trump allies like Steve Bannon. Today, he suggested giving foreign college graduates a different sort of card. The exit visa should be clipped to the, to the, to the diploma, the exit visa. Yes, let's take them in a selective basis, train them up, let them root for college football and get all the, you know, you look at the college football stands, the diversity, it's fabulous. But then it's time to go back home and make your country great again. My political sources on this tonight, CNN senior political commentator and former senior advisor to President Obama, David Axelrod, and Republican strategist Doug High. Doug, let's start with you from the Republican perspective. Quite a shift in policy and rhetoric, to say the least, from Trump. What is his political calculation, if there is one here? Yeah, Pamela, it is. And let me first apologize that I'm not wearing a Carolina blue tie for yes, you. Yes, you should be. Uh, I, yeah, I was, <laughs> sorry, I was at Patsy's Italian restaurant in Midtown New York where Sal makes the best clams basilico <laughs> in the world and okay. rushed right over here for you. But Thank look, you. this is a big <laughs> shift from, for Donald Trump. And actually, the policy that he espoused in this case is, is one I agree with. And it's very interesting to watch how Trump world and MAGA world reacts to when Donald Trump says something that's sort of off script. Uh, what we mm -hmm. see is a real mix here. Steve Bannon says one thing, that this is terrible, you shouldn't do this. A, a lot of the Trump acolytes will do that. Mike Lee said that this was a, ter a terrible idea a few weeks ago. He deleted that tweet uh, earlier today. So what it tells you is there's a split in Trump world, but Donald Trump is not a set of policy policy prescriptions. Donald Trump is an attitude. And what it means is everybody's going to fall in line eventually. That's that's a fair point. We've seen that in the past, right? Uh, past behavior is a best predictor of future behavior. Mm -hmm. But David, we want to remind viewers how Trump has talked about migrants in just this last year. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. They poison mental institutions and prisons all over the world. And we know they come from prisons. We know they come from mental institutions, insane asylums. We know they're terrorists. So how do you square the two? Well, look, uh, you know, I don't know whether this was a well thought through policy shift on the part of Donald Trump, or was it him sitting on a podcast with four Silicon Valley investors and wanting to play to the audience? Uh, which, you know, this often happens in politics. Trump is not an ideologue when it comes down to it. Uh, obviously, the immigration position has been key uh, to his politics from the beginning, but I really think he he says and does what he thinks will be advantageous to him. And in that moment, he thought it would be advantageous to tell that particular audience, which is very desperate for uh, the high level uh, talent that they can glean, uh, that they support this. I agree with Doug. I think it's a good policy. I think there are all kinds of immigration uh, policies that uh, we should implement that would help benefit this country. Uh, but I just don't know that he thought it through. And I'm sure that alarm bells went off at the campaign headquarters when they uh, when they heard that he had taken this position. And they, uh, you know, they sort of broke glass and tried to qualify it because they knew what the reaction would be. I'll be interested to see whether he mentions this again anytime soon. And Pamela, right. by the way, David highlights something that campaign people and, and communication staff in congressional offices deal with on a daily basis. The difficulty between a, a negative interview and a friendly interview. Quite often, you know, the friendly interview comes up, somebody who, who is ideologically aligned with you, somebody who's a, maybe a personal friend to the candidate or to the communications director and says, oh, it's going to be all softballs. When all the softballs come, that's actually when you get into dangerous territory because you start agreeing with the host over and over again, and you end right. up like a frog in hotter water in a place you don't want to be in. 
hostile interviews can actually be the easier ones for a candidate to do. That's sort of counterintuitive, yeah. but it's something campaign people deal with all the time. That's really interesting. It's also it's also Pam. Yeah. It's also it's also it's also why candidates often make mistakes at fundraisers mm -hmm. because they feel like they're among friends. They yep. want to cater to the audience, and they mm -hmm. say things that get them in trouble there's a the, history is replete with those examples so yeah this was a firestorm i i, ju I don't know uh, whether he's going to repeat this or not it seems to me he touched the rail he got the shock and we'll see what happens well we know the shock didn't always keep him away from touching the rail again uh doug let's get to this new cnn reporting that really takes us inside trump's vp search and these shadow campaigns trying to influence his decision so we're learning his oldest son donald trump jr has made his affinity for senator jd vance well known Rupert murdoch is pushing for governor doug burgum and sean hannity has gone to bat for senator marco rubio arguing that the son of cuban immigrants could help trump with latino voters however the trump campaign is insisting he alone will make the call how do you see this playing out that last part is the most important part Everything we know about Donald Trump is that he's a decider, whether you like the decision or not, and that he decides things when he wants to. So we've seen a lot of speculation. I remember a dinner, uh, Pamela and David, that I was at in February, where somebody who has worked in Republican politics for a long time, somebody I really respect, said to me, it's absolutely going to be Ben Carson. This was in February. Nothing was going to be certain in February. Nothing is certain in June. We need to take the reporting that we see, accurate though it may be, with a grain of salt the size of the Empire State Building. Because Donald Trump is going to make up his mind today. He'll change his mind tomorrow. He'll change it a third time, fourth time, fifth time. And what it's going to come down to is what does Donald Trump think at that moment when he finally makes the decision? Does he decide, I need to boost my support with African-American males? Okay, well, then maybe it's Tim Scott. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's Ben Carson. Probably not. Maybe it's a Byron Donalds. Does he say, I got a problem with women in suburban areas? Then maybe it's a Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Then maybe um, it's, it's an Elise Stefanik. But it's a wild card until Donald decides. All right, Doug, hope yeah. you get back to that fun dinner if you had to leave to come <laughs> on the show. And next thing, you better wear your Tar Heel tie. Absolutely. David Axelrod, Go or Heels. Kentucky Wildcats style, take that too. <laughs> David Axelrod, uh, great seeing you as well. We'll still All ahead. All right, you guys, great to see you. The Supreme Court is about to.